Hello everybody and welcome to this week's vlog. Um, now, if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, I was actually um, going to come out and do this um, particular vlog from this location and I got sidetracked by those red kites which I've been photographing for the last couple of weeks. Um, the reason I quite like this place is because I suppose for me this started my interest in wildlife photography and, and if I just give you a little bit of history um, 20, nearly 20 years ago I was coming back from work, I'd been doing food inspections um, all day um, and I hadn't had any lunch because I was working through lunch and I thought I'll just drive home by this back road and I thought I could do with getting a bit of fresh air because I'd been in buildings all day so I came parked at the top here and headed down this bridle way and uh, to cut a long story short I had a walk down the side of this wood this huge bird flew up in front of me which I knew was a buzzard um, but it was it was on on the floor there where it had flown up from was a dead pigeon which I thought was quite curious because I thought well you know buzzards don't normally take pigeons out it was getting, starting to get quite dark then so what I decided to do um, was hide this pigeon and then come back the following morning I'd actually bought some um, a, a big lens I'd got a I think it was a Canon 10D then and a Sigma 170 500 um, really more or less close to the start of when digital photography was coming in and I'd got this lens and not done anything with it and I thought well this would be a perfect opportunity it might come back so following morning I turned up put the pigeon back where I'd found it it was still dark got under the the sort of forest canopy under the hedge at the side of this uh, ride where this bird had been and all of a sudden this bird landed on this pigeon and it was a female sparrowhawk so obviously what had happened is the sparrowhawk had killed the pigeon the buzzard had mobbed the sparrowhawk off its food and then I'd turned up and mobbed the um, buzzard off that pigeon that it had taken from the sparrowhawk and I proceeded to take hundreds of pictures got some really stunning images of this sparrowhawk I had it mantling this prey and looking straight down the lens at me about four or five meters away from me and I thought these are absolutely awesome images anyway when I got them home on the computer um, they were all blurred <laughs> and uh, what had happened is I mean I did a lot of testing on that lens after that because I knew they were sharp they were sharp when I took them and uh, it transpired that the lens needed rechipping for digital it was actually set up to be put on a film camera uh, that's what the shop told me anyway so when it had gone back and been rechipped it came back and it was fine um, didn't help me with those images unfortunately and I never I've never since that point got images that good of a female sparrowhawk before so that's something that you know still waits to be done but it really sparked my interest in wildlife photography and this is why this place although I've not been for two or three years now I thought yeah, it'd be really nice to get back and see what's happening see what's in the area and just have a wander around right so what am I doing here what's so appealing about this place other than nostalgia well it's actually the place where the rivers Morn and Meaden meet and there's a couple of little woodlands here this is like a mixed woodland on my right and then there's a pine woodland behind me um, and it's very quiet it really is very quiet down here and it's probably not been so quiet over lockdown but normally it's really quiet and you know that's what I love to be able to spend a couple of hours in quite a small area but um, you know with sort of quite a diverse range of animals and birds potentially in the area so one of the things I'm looking for today is kingfisher I have seen them on here before and I just feel like this potentially could be a really good spot for them and uh, I want to get some kingfisher images this year I probably won't get any today um, but if I can confirm that they're actually on here then that'd be great and then I'll have a look around and see if I, there is anything um, around to photograph today but yeah this this river here I'm not sure whether this is the Morn or the Meaden that splits off here and one goes one direction one goes the other around different sides of this wood the other one um, I've always thought that would be good for water voles so I think I've seen one once a long time ago as I say this is 
probably 2004, 2005 when I first came here, so things may have changed, but I do know that some things have made a bit of a comeback, like otters, so we could even have otters on here, I don't know. Uh, so it's really exciting just to come back and sort of rediscover a place that you've not been for to for a while. Um, I'd also like to say, I said I want to get some pictures of kingfishers, and a good channel to check out is a guy called Mike Lane, and I'll put a link to his channel uh, up here or in the at the end of this video. Really, because he's been doing wildlife and bird photography uh, for probably twice as long as I have, if not longer. You know, from the era, era of uh, from the era of film, really, and. Uh, he did mention something, you know, as I've said to people before, you're always learning, you know, you might think you know everything, but you never do. And I'd been putting a perch out on my local um, little stream, the beck that runs down into the River Trent. And I left it there months and weren't getting any kingfishers landing on it, even though it looked like it had a lovely pool underneath it, a lovely dark, deep pool that had always got quite a few fish in it. I wasn't seeming to get anything, and then I watched one of uh, Mike's videos and he said if you, if a kingfisher lands on a perch and doesn't get anything it's very unlikely to land on it again um, but if you put a new perch in then a kingfisher if it flies down the river will almost turn round on itself to go and land on that perch to try it out basically so I thought if I find kingfishers on this river here I'm going to test that out so what I'll do is come down and put a perch in and then just wait and see if a kingfisher lands on it and just test out that theory. Um, so yeah, that should be quite good, but as I say, I'm not sure. Really today, I'm just checking to see whether we've got any kingfishers around um, and what else is around as well. So anyway, that's the plan. I'm walking down the river at the minute. I'm not sure, as I say, whether it's the, I think this might be the Meaden. Um, and it does look, quite good for kingfishers actually so fingers crossed one of the things that i've realized actually just by being down here for sort of 10 minutes is i know you can hear vehicles going across a road at the top there but it's so tranquil down here you can just hear the the birds the sound of the river there's, there's nothing at all other than that they're just just the sounds of nature really and I've just watched a wren go across the from the fall, the woodland here into onto the edge of the river here um, in all these um, I don't know what they are I think they're some sort of honeysuckle or something that's dangling down into the river off one of these old trees and uh, feeding right more or less in the water oh, it's so so beautiful and unspoilt down here it's great one thing I have noticed is this woodland behind me. I don't know what's happened because as I said there it's got really really that field there there was always a, a wet section as if the river used to run across it at some point um, and it's really really wet now that's how I've got wet through getting here but it seems to have transferred into this woodland behind me um, I don't know what's happened there but that's become really swampy um, and I'll show you probably on the way back when you walk into this wood there's the wood over this over the back there that is already a swamp, a lot of the trees have died and uh, it's actually quite, can be quite nice in misty weather for landscape photography. But yeah, it's just, just so beautiful down here. Right, I've been walking down the river for um, quite a time now and I've come to this long section here now. The first section I walked across, there was an awful lot of um, debris in the water and it was I think a little bit shallower there um, a lot of trees down across it and things this section here is, is quite different it's quite um, clear of any debris and it looks slightly deeper um, I can't quite see to the bottom here so I'm thinking if they have got kingfishers I'm pretty sure they have um, I've not seen one yet which would sort of seal the deal for me but I'm thinking if I could put a perch in here one day and just get myself covered into the head uh, into the edge somewhere um, it's bound to land on it but yeah I mean it looks really deep here and uh, very clear so I'm going to keep walking along a bit further and then I'm going to cut back across the uh, river Morn I think it is 
um, have a walk down there, see if there's any evidence of water voles. Uh, and then we'll see if we can get some shots of at least something today. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's lovely and quiet down here. I just wish the light was a little bit better again. I don't know whether you can see there's some sun rays poking through the cloud over there, but uh, I was hoping it was going to be a little bit clearer. But anyway, we'll see how we go. I'm going to walk a little bit further around here and then, um, as I say, cut across to the uh, River Morn, I think it is. All right. Right, I've just come across to the to the other river. Um, wow, has this changed. Um, yeah, it's amazing what sort of three years, what a difference it can make. I mean, the first difference is this, this behind me, and I'll show you an image of it now. Um, that used to be a footpath or a path that you could walk up across the top of this bank in here. Um, now, I must have visited pretty regularly, and I think it was probably me and, and the foxes and crops, a couple of other people, kept it clear. As you can see, nobody's walked this for three years. It's just an absolute bramble fest. You can't get across it, so I'm going to have to find a different way around. What I'm also noticing is this, this river here is very, very reedy at the minute. I was looking for signs of water voles, so you know one of the signs you look for for that is the, the tops of the reeds being nibbled off. There actually does look quite a few down here that have had the tops taken off, so maybe there is some water voles down here, I don't know. I've not heard that um, characteristic plop noise as they drop into the water, but so now I'll show you this river here, and you can, if you look closely you'll see that some of the tips of the reeds have been taken off so whether that is water water vole or not i don't know the problem i've got is i can't sort of sneak up on the river because it's just well uh, however careful you are walking anything is going to hear that so i think i'm going to have to um head back into the wood i didn't see a path there so whether people are started to walk through the wood instead i don't know but yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame in one way, but if this is impassable, and I do find that there are water vole on here, it means I could actually set up and have a really quiet place that nobody else is going to stumble on and disturb while I'm there. So, I don't know, it swings and roundabouts, really. But we'll move on and see what else we can find. Right, I've just fought my way out of that woodland and then... Uh... I just thought I'd show you this swampy area here. I'm going to go and sit and have a look and see what happens around here because I've never really done much work and this is this is much more extensive than it used to be. It really do, looks like some sort of primordial swamp, but I don't know whether you can see. Over the back there, we've got a, a swan's made its nest, so a really brilliant nest. Nobody can get to it, I don't think, but um, yeah. Um, you don't want anybody really, anybody really throwing anything at you. Liable to happen around here, so I'm hoping that will be okay. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to see. Um, but yeah, it's really overgrown down here. This river, it's, they've really let it go. It really needs some work doing on it, I think. But yeah, I'm going to crack on round here and see how extensive this little swamp area is now, because it's definitely this used to dry out completely in the summer, but I suspect this doesn't dry out any longer. All the flooding we've had over the last couple of years, it's just literally now keeping it wet all the time. So, another different habitat, if you like. Right, I think I'm going to end this video for today. Um, it's been really interesting coming back here after three years and, and noticing the changes that's happened. Um, I have to say, some of them are for the better uh, because I think the habitat has changed significantly in some areas to... Probably, um, you know, especially this swampy area here, which, you know, it's not something that we have a lot of um, in this country, and um, it will bring out different species. It's a nice new habitat that I'm going to come back to in the summer. I think, particularly for me, this could be a good place for grass snakes swimming on the water. Things like dragonflies should be great here in the um, late summer. So that's something I'm going to come back as well as just behind the camera here where I've walked down I've, I've basically walked right next to what looks to be a new badger set and again the Sun goes down in this direction and although we've got trees in this direction in the in the west 
um, there is a gap where this swampy water is so it could be reasonably good in the next couple of months if this badger set is active which it does look like it is it's only a small one but I will be checking it out so yeah it's been a great day for checking stuff out and what I would say is um, you know people who watch these videos can sometimes get to thinking that we come out and we take great images every time we don't far from it in fact we take images and occasionally you get some stunning images but it's days like this where you do the background work where that makes that possible so if I hadn't come here today I wouldn't be thinking grass snakes on water I wouldn't be thinking this is a great place for dragonflies and as I pan around this you'll see there's loads of these little stumps where you can imagine dragonflies will, will uh, sit and rest in the summer as they'll be skimming over here to protect, protecting their territories so yeah it could be absolutely fantastic so um, as I say nothing's been lost but it's one of those days where they have to put this work in to, to get the rewards later um, down the line so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up as always subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you next week for another video probably I might be doing the uh, looking at the kestrels up on the airfield or the red kites or I've also got to try and see if I can find if there's any foxes um, any young fox cubs at the place where I saw them last year and the year before so they should be coming out of the um, of the den now so hopefully they should be up there again if they are as I say I'll do a vlog from up there anyway see you next week Thank you.